Thank you, Phil. <clears throat> when I uh, met uh, Phil Newman um, 18 months ago, I think it was, or just over then, Phil, uh, he just founded First Longevity, and he described to me over a cup of coffee uh, what was happening in longevity from anti aging supplements, drug development that would tackle diseases of aging, rejuvenation, neurotech, and so much more. And he also laid out to me his vision of a plan of building First Longevity and a website, Longevity Technology, that would help to broadcast that message across, um, across the world. Three things struck me when I listened to him. Um, three things struck me when I listened to him. The first was just how little I knew about longevity. Um, the second thing was the enormity of the challenge of being able to communicate this nascent and evolving industry. And the third thing was the exciting opportunity that lay ahead for investors and all of us as a society to be able to help in tackling diseases of aging and enabling people to have healthier and longer lives. Now, Phil's already showed you this chart earlier, and I know he's a big fan of this. Um, so this is from a, a book uh, called Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore which was initially sort of what well, was about uh, talking about how tech companies um, found, find it quite difficult uh, uh, becoming, uh, going from innovation and early adoption through to a, becoming a mainstream market. And I think we're kind of at an interesting stage with longevity as well, where we're probably at a similar stage. Um, we are seeing growth in longevity research. Investment is, is increasing dramatically in this area. We're seeing lots of clinical progress, as you've already seen today, from some of the companies. And there are already some market-ready products that are driving the market towards uh, increased levels of uh, awareness and adoption. But one of the things that we believe in First Longevity is that um, we need to really prime the market, um, really, and get people to try and understand um, what, what the market is about. And, um, and obviously, communication is, is quite crucial in that with both business and consumer. If we take investors, for instance, who are looking to understand the longevity opportunity, by having good quality information in terms of market research on each of the individual companies, um, help obviously helps them to make good, solid, sound investment decisions. And for clinicians, whilst many of them have already moved from just focusing on fixing diseases to prevention, understanding what their uh, compatriots and peers are, are doing in the industry is um, of, of great interest to them. And of course, for consumers, um, we've already seen a shift in, in terms of people thinking about their wellness, both in terms of not just physical but mental wellness, um, but now hopefully some more people thinking about longevity. It was Alex Zavaronkov who um, said, actually, um, that uh, longevity technology is quickly turning into the Bloomberg of the emerging longevity industry. Um, and I think that describes us very well in that we are quickly and accurately delivering business and financial information, uh, news and insight, um, about longevity on our new website. So what we've done is we've built, we've built a platform um, for the company, which, as you can see, has various sections to it, media, investment, and data, e-commerce, and services, which I'll come on to some of those in, in a moment. And it's our plan to build on our leadership position as the number one business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer uh, daily news and opinion website. And if we look at um, how we're doing so far, bearing in mind this is only 18 months ago that uh, we started this process, um, we've, we've already now have the, the industry and news element up and running with our, our longevity technology website. We have a market intelligence division which is doing exceptionally well. 
and the one that we recently started um, due to some interesting discussions with some of the companies that we were covering was an investor portal. So those are the things that you can see there in orange. And in terms of the next steps for us, you'll see in green, which I'll cover some of that in a moment, and then in um, gray, uh, things that we may be doing in the next two to three years. So first of all, in terms of industry news and uh, opinion. So hopefully most of you have been to the website. They've seen long longevity technology. Um, we are now the number one destination for daily news and insights. And we know that because we've been doing a lot of research on that in terms of how it's been going. So we can see that we are one of the fastest growing in terms of um, domains. We, um, if we take October, for example, last month, um, our average was around about 717,000 impressions and nearly 300,000 unique users already. And interestingly, with the audience profile, um, C-suite, around about 18%, investors, um, around 19%, and, um, and in terms of researchers, 25 and so on. And um, the, the other interesting area for us as well is looking at the demographics. Um, it's not just people like myself who perhaps would be extremely interested in uh, looking at uh, some longevity products and what, what is available um, because of uh, my age. But when you look at the demographics, um, a third of the people are actually in the 25 to 34 age group. And if you take it from 18 to 34, that's over 60% of our users or readership is from that age group. Um, and the other thing that's really interesting in terms of um, where our traffic is coming from is that over 50% of the traffic is from the US. Um, and we have other countries such as Canada, Germany, and other international markets as well. So we are really becoming um, an international business. And... Um, that's something that we are certainly addressing for the future, I think. And in terms of the, um, the website itself, for some companies, it's actually driving commercial success. Um, this is a product uh, that was featured recently, a new supplement um, which slows aging and promotes weight loss, a product called Glylo, which um, in, in October had over half a million page views on the article that was written. And um, we were informed by the company that they'd sold out of their product within days. Um, so that's uh, obviously a very impressive um, a bit of work there. In terms of advertising as well, we've, we have some advertisers from prescription through to um, supplements. And all of those advertisers have come back with some very positive feedback. And interestingly enough, what's happening is that we're getting increasingly contacted by companies who are looking to participate. Um, and the other thing that I think that's really sort of helped us to sort of think about things for the future is in terms of, well, how can we help some of those companies who perhaps don't have sophisticated e-commerce e operations um, to be able to um, help uh, market their products better? A market intelligence. Um, Phil has done a great job in terms of um, trying to help sort of define the longevity market here. And um, clearly there are markets here that we, we know, like diagnostics and aging in place and so on. But what's been really interesting here is that um, the companies actually help to further stratify that down into lots of different levels um, so that we can um, have a deeper structured analysis of, of the components of, of the um, the market intelligence on the companies and sectors that we are, we're looking at. So for the last few months, we've been producing a monthly report on, on market intelligence. And um, normally that was being charged, um, a, a fee was being charged for the reports. But um, I'm pleased to say that as from this week, uh, Phil has informed us that uh, this will actually be a free report on some of those sectors so that uh, this will help to expand the readership 
and obviously build our brand reputation for the business too. So the sorts of things that we'll be doing is uh, profiling companies within the sectors, um, writing articles on them in, on our website as well. Um, we'll be doing a dedicated mini report on companies and products and also um, identifying some of the trailblazers that are within those sectors um, and putting them into a separate little document uh, which uh, people will be able to receive free. So the market intelligence reports that we've done so far, we did a very successful one on supplements, um, ovarian longevity and young blood, and we've had some very positive feedback on, on those reports. And I think what's really interesting from our perspective is to see the type of um, companies that are now starting to follow us on our website. And you can see some of those companies um, listed on the right-hand side there. The third part of the, um, the work that we've been doing um, in the last 18 months is in terms of our investor portal. And this came about because of conversations with some of the companies that were looking to raise funds. And uh, it became clear to us that um, with the contacts that we had and were getting on our website in terms of investors, uh, there was a clear need and an opportunity for us to be able to work with those companies, those startups. Um, and connect them with investors. So we, um, we developed this investor portal. Um, so this has been able to um, support growth in some of the longevity areas like mitochondrial dysfunction, cellular reprogramming, drug discovery and supplements and so on. And also from the company's point of view, with our new brokerage uh, scheme, we've been able to participate in the value that we're creating as well. Um, by helping broker some of those deals. And in some instances, it's actually enabled us to have some equity too. Um, this process has been, been sort of in development for about 12 months, and um, I'm pleased to say that we're now at the stage where we're sub-licensed for the FCA in the UK and uh, also able to be chaperoned for the SEC in the US as well. Some interesting facts about that brokerage business so far. Um, it's only been going since June 2021, so only five months. Um, we now have over 110 registered portal partners, VCs, high net worths, family offices. Um, very interesting is that we have um, been approached and um, signed up some interesting uh, arrangements with some universities, now 16 in total, in terms of technology transfer. And um, coming on to the investors uh, that have been registered on our website now, we're not far off the 1,000 now, we're 882. So these are additional investors to the ones um, that I mentioned previously, who are just um, look, looking for news on, on companies to invest in. So in the five months, we've reviewed over 100 decks. Um, we've completed three deals, and we have five on our portal currently. And at the moment, three who are about to, to launch with us on, on that portal. And if we were to kind of have a look at the, the income that might be derived from those sort of uh, deals that are, I've just spoken about, it could be on a sensitized basis, maybe about half a million pounds worth of revenue for the business. And the really exciting thing that we um, were hoping we were hoping to say something about, but it's not not launched as yet, um, is that one of the companies that uh, completed is quite um, is quite close to actually doing an IPO, and is in preparation for that right now. If we look at the, um, the portal on our website right now, you'll see um, some of the companies that we have. Um, I mentioned the five companies. Uh, so Uva Bioscience, um, Oxford Drug Design, Shift, which Daniel spoke to you about um, just now, and Mitocholine, who you'll be hearing about um, uh, later this afternoon, and uh, also Acuity. And um, also, Human people, which you learned about um, earlier today, will be uh, joining our platform um, fairly soon. 
So the media and investment side of things we've, we've sort of worked on and the next area that we believe we need to work on is, is the data and e-commerce. In terms of what, what, what it's taken us to get to this, this far is that um, we raised around about £550,000 in our pre-seed money. That's the first, first investment. Um, investors included Jim Mellon and Longevity Tech Fund. And last year, we were just one employee. We're now 12. Um, and we were revenue generating for a month too. And uh, clearly, we're already scaling. But we have some much bigger ideas to respond to, the, to this growth opportunity. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit about that now. So in terms of market data, our market intelligence um, section, um, we, we've done very well in terms of the reports that we've, we've um, been doing in the last few months. And during, during the research on that, we've been able to uh, build a lot of data in terms of crunch, like a crunch base for longevity. Um, so we've got information on corporate data, funding, who the team are, um, what sort of target hallmarks of aging they're going for, uh, which therapeutic categories and so on. So a tremendous amount of information there which we can actually put together um, uh, a lot of, in, a, a lot of um, intelligence on the, on the readiness of, of those companies in terms of um, investment. And using that sort of uh, data, we, what we will be doing is actually putting together reports um, which will be used uh, for investors um, in terms of research and, and, and seeing whether this is something they wish to invest in or, and for M&A reporting. The other set stage that we've been working on for the business um, is, an, is a, a fund. And this also came about in terms of conversation with some of the family offices and um, investors that we, we had conversations with. Our website does a great job in terms of media promotion. It promotes the companies. It also finds out about the companies and writes stories about the companies. Our market intelligence writes reports about those companies and our data reports will be able to have detailed deep dives on those companies. The investment brokerage side of the business is also working with some of those companies that are looking, those startups and uh, C Series A businesses that are looking to, to get further investment. So it's our view that what we want to do is to uh, launch a, a first longevity fund which we will be working in association with some of our uh, over 110 syndicated partners that we already have. So in terms of um, the size of the fund, we're looking at a uh, fund in, in excess of 50 million. And um, I'm sure some of those sort of management fees and carry and so on will look fairly standard to you. Our, our consumer side of the business is, is one that Phil, that I know, is very, very keen on. And um, what we've seen is that with the number of users coming to the website, which is around about 13%, it's just purely consumers, um, many of them are looking for uh, solutions for uh, solutions and products to, to be able to purchase. And... So what we decided to do, in, in terms of looking at some of the, um, some of the uh, information that we've been getting on, on our website, whenever we do a story about a, a, a supplement, for example, you tend to see some very big spikes, and I mentioned one of those earlier. So we're definitely going to um, switch up that consumer content and marketing area. And today I'm... Pleased to be able to tell you that uh, we're launching a new consumer media and e-commerce brand called Lifeline. And we're all very um, familiar with the Lifeline on our hands. And this is the logo for the new consumer media and e-commerce brand that we have. And as you see, the Lifeline is extended and actually goes 
goes on in, and could be in, in perpetuity. And in terms of our domain and our website, that's what the, um, the brand is going to be looking like in terms of lifeline. So what we're hoping to do with this website and this domain is to be able to really spread the message about longevity and, um, and build knowledge about longevity and some of the products um, that are available and some health, health stories as well. Giving people also the opportunity to uh, purchase uh, based on some some stories, uh, some product reviews and and uh, information on on the products as well. So from April 22, we'll be launching our consumer focused content and brand. Um, it will be a dedicated sub brand to the Longevity Technology website. It's going to have consumer focused content, product reviews, uh, social media engagement. Um, and also a curated e-commerce store with uh, products uh, selected by, by the team. And uh, also have a weekly Lifeline podcast. I mentioned earlier about biz business becoming quite international. Um, and um, one of the things that um, we have in the plan for the next few years is to make that business uh, much more international based in um, also the US and other markets. And uh, you can see there that whilst I was talking about 12 people today, um, the intention is, is that would be around about maybe 60 to 65 within about three to five years. So clearly to be able to fund that sort of growth, um, we are going to be doing a round. The next round is a seed round, uh, raising two million. And um, that's going to be at a pre-money of six million pounds. I began by saying that there were um, three things that struck me when Phil and I met and had a chat over coffee. The first was how little I knew about longevity. And um, well, clearly I still know very little, but I have a personal vested interest in knowing more and so that I can improve my future health, but also hopefully future wealth. Um, having the privilege that I have currently of meeting two to three longevity startups a week and listening to their passionate presentations as they look to raise capital and continue their company's journey, I have to say is immensely interesting educational and particularly rewarding and particularly where we as First Longevity can assist. Second thing that I mentioned was the enormity of the challenge of communicating longevity to help it cross the chasm. And that clearly is still there, but we do feel that First Longevity does have a viable strategy to help build that bridge across the chasm with the business that we have now and that we're creating for the future. And finally, what a great use of investor money it is that uh, we can help longevity companies achieve their innovative and important milestones, enabling healthier and longer lives for us all. I'm conscious that um, I've had to spin through that presentation fairly quickly due to time constraints, but we do have a number of our team here today who would be pleased to chat with you more. And of course, you can contact Phil or myself directly should you want to know more about First Longevity, our longevity technology website and our future. Thank you.